I'm Corey Skimming, Product Marketing Manager with VMware Tanzu. And today I'm joined by Brian Polster from Broadleaf Commerce. Hi, Brian. Hi, Corey. Hi, I'm uh, Brian Polster with Broadleaf, um, founder and CEO of the company and a huge fan of Spring. I've uh, been at Broadleaf for over 10 years and, and have worked with the Spring framework for over 15. We really appreciate the thought leadership uh, that comes from the Spring team and the, and the work that has, has gone with the Spring framework. And we highly leverage it at Broadleaf. Uh, in my role, I work with our clients and team to prioritize our product roadmap and excited to be talking to the Spring audience today. Awesome. We're excited to have Broadleaf Commerce at Spring One this year. So to kick it off, why don't you tell the audience a little bit about Broadleaf Commerce? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, Broadleaf Commerce is an application framework and a solution for developing custom commerce applications. Um, we tend to work with clients that have complex commerce needs. Uh, in some cases, those clients in the past have maybe even rolled their own uh, because they have very unique needs. Um, at a high level, our, our framework consists of, of three key elements. Um, there's a set of common libraries uh, that are used to leverage commerce functionality uh, across all of the various services. We have dozens of microservices that have been implemented uh, to, to handle various functions uh, that are typical for commerce. You might think of things like cart and checkout and customer loyalty, um, orders, things like that. Um, but there are dozens of services that, uh, that together make up the Broadly framework. And then we also have some applications. Uh, some of those are just starter apps to, to show people how to leverage the services in an actual application. But we ship with a backend application that's a fairly rich uh, unified admin that is used to, um, for backend uh, folks that work with commerce, like your merchandisers and your customer service agents, who work with customers and products uh, in the backend uh, utilities. So obviously within the last, you know, 18 months to two years, there's been this expedited shift to e-commerce and, and new commerce models more generally, um, you know, kind of at a global scale. Uh, how does Broadleaf Commerce support organizations, but also, you know, the developer teams that are responsible for implementing um, some of these new models? In their in their shift to e-commerce. That's a great question, and I and I think there's been a, a number of companies that were that that had challenges that, that were different uh, types of challenges. Uh, in Broadleaf's case, because we're a, a framework that's made for customization, we really empower developers. And so, if there was a feature needed, you know, that in response to uh, the pandemic or or something that their company needed to do. They didn't have to wait on us to build that. The, the framework was customizable and they could take a very narrow approach and do exactly what they needed to do. And some of our clients did amazing things. They had to, they had to respond and the development teams that use Broadleaf had to do amazing things to shift businesses on the edge to a more online and, and sort of online pick up in store, um, you know, pick up at the car type of models. They had to be able to introduce the, those. And, and for us as a framework, um, our real role in that is allowing developers to when we build features, they can leverage those, but when they need to build features in a hurry, they're not stuck. They're able to get in there and do what they need to do. And, and that's really one of the benefits of having an extensible commerce framework versus sort of a, an out of box one that, um, you know, you have what you have and you kind of got to try to work around it. That's awesome. So it sounds like you really give teams the flexibility and agility needed to respond to, you know, changing, changing markets and changing circumstances. That's a good way to put it. We really look at enabling and empowering teams three ways. One of the ways is that we leverage Spring and other open source technologies. And so as Spring innovates, those, those can be used by our clients. And then we as a team are innovating and we're adding functionality. And so you, our teams and our clients can use that. But we don't discount the fact that the developers that use Broadleaf are really good developers and they also are innovating. And so those three tiers of innovation is, is really what we think is a differentiator with the way Broadleaf approaches commerce uh, as opposed to other solutions. It's not right for everybody, but mm -hmm. for customers that need that uh, customization, it's a, it's a really good solution. To double click on that a little bit, I know you have kind of four pillars uh, that specifically help the developer community when they're, they're building out this platform. Could, do you want to talk a little bit about those? Yeah, we, we really do say our, um, we're a framework that's made for developers. And when we say that, um, you know, there are a lot of business features and a lot of things that are that the business uh, users of Broadleaf really care about, and we do those really well as, as well. But when we say we're made for developers, it really comes across these, these four pillars. 
Um, first of all, extensibility, every single thing we build, every component in Broadleaf, and there are thousands of APIs, there are thousands of components, every one of them has been designed for extensibility. Um, most of those are written in Java. We do have some SDKs and other things that are written in JavaScript, but most of those are in Java. Uh, they run within Spring Boot containers. And just by using Spring patterns to, for example, maybe extend one of our classes and change the Spring Boot configuration to use yours, you can override Broadleaf components. And that's an example of, of the type of extensibility that we do, um, but across everything, our APIs, our domain, our services, they're all built for extensibility. Um, the second option is a term that we use called flex package. It's something that's relatively new to us that, that we kind of designed out of necessity, but it works really well. Not every one of our clients is at the same level of maturity with microservices. And in some cases, the idea of running 40 or 50 microservices in production with failover and, and, and this type of thing is overwhelming to them. And in some cases, it's not even needed. So we have the ability to take these disparate microservices, even though each one of them has their own bounded context and each one of them can be deployed and scaled and run separately, we have the ability to run them together. This has uh, something that we started working with our uh, early adopters of our microservice and it turns out to have a lot of benefits. For us as Broadleaf, it allows us to design microservices in a more granular way, um, even though our clients might not need it to be that granular. They're able to combine those services together and deploy and manage them separately, kind of eases the, uh, the deployment concerns, especially for mid or, or even some large clients, but they still have that flexibility. If one of the services needs to scale independently or there's a maintenance benefit, they can actually separate that out. So we call that a flex package and it's basically just the ability to combine those microservices into single deployments that are managed together. Um, the third pillar here is something that we're really excited about. It's what we call unified admin. If you think about a merchandiser or a customer service rep and they're working with orders in a, in a backend system, um, we don't expect our clients to write custom backend systems for everyone. So we provide a good backend framework for, for uh, using that. And all of the different services, like a merchandiser might be working on products, but that also needs the pricing microservice and the inventory microservice and, and other aspects, maybe the promotion service. Um, we provide a unified representation of those services uh, in a out-of-box application that um, can be used with Broadleaf. The way that we do that is we provide a metadata library and a metadata layer that translates the services and the API calls within those services into a set or library of React components that our admin uses to render the different views and interactions. Uh, this is fully extensible and a, a Java developer can make customizations to our admin just by following the DSL for our metadata. If you are a React developer, you can customize even further. You can go and replace uh, wholesale views. You can add, add new React uh, components, just like you're programming in React and basically do whatever you wanna do. So we kind of support the typical Java developers need to make customizations and lightweight customizations to backend functionality while also allowing you to, to do full customization. And we do all of that in something we call our unified admin. This final uh, item is, is really not a broadly feature as much as it might be uh, products like, like Tanzu and other DevOps uh, uh, functionality. What we do is we make sure that we're compatible with those things mm -hmm. and we think about the commerce implications of it. So for example, when someone adds to cart that might call uh, the cart service and pricing service and inventory service. And we make sure that our framework components work well together so that they can be monitored and observed and performance aspects can be, can be looked at. And so that's what we mean by inherent observability. We provide some dashboards like for uh, with Prometheus and Grafana, mm -hmm. uh, some open source tooling that actually works well with, with proprietary tooling as well uh, to really understand what's going on within your broadly framework across your entire application. Wonderful. So the framework not only provides the kind of agility that companies might need in developing their e-commerce strategy, but you also provide a host of tools and, and options that can also help to reduce cognitive load where they don't need to be spending it. Yeah, so, that's a great way to say it. Thank you. <laughs> so if teams are looking to get started with broadly commerce today, what should they do? Where should they go? And is there anything specific for the Spring One audience? Yes, uh, as a commerce framework, there's actually a lot going on. There's a lot of things that you might be interested in. 
And developers can explore this on our website. Now, if you, if you just went to our website, you're gonna see sort of a marketing view of Broadleaf Commerce. And that might be helpful to kind of get an idea of what we do. But within Broadleaf Commerce uh, website, there's a, there's a link at the top of it that's for Developer Central. And in here, you're getting into architecture documentation. You're getting into specific service documentation. You can look at specific APIs and uh, our open APIs are documented. Uh, you can see uh, Java docs. And so you can really get to a, a, a level of depth. Uh, depending on what you're looking for, that may be enough, but we also welcome developers to, to email us uh, at our info at channel. Uh, there's also chat boxes and things like that on the website. We welcome that developer communication and are more than happy to, uh, to talk with a developer on the Broadleaf side to answer questions that you might have or point you in the right direction. That's great stuff. Thanks so much for chatting with me, Brian. And we're excited to have Broadleaf Commerce at Spring One this year. We're excited to be here. Thank you, Corey.